Irene is currently awaiting her day in court charged with hindering a police investigation, after she let wanted fugitive Dana Matheson hide out in her beachside home. Believing that Dana was innocent, Irene let her stay, but it wasn't long before corrupt cop Detective Madden stormed in and discovered Dana's hiding place, with Irene and Harper arrested shortly after. While the charges against Dana were soon dropped, it meant nothing for Harper and Irene's charges, and they both faced sentencing after pleading guilty to the offenses. When we leave things at the end of this week, Irene receives a surprise call from her lawyer, Greta, informing her that her sentencing has been scheduled for the very next day. Greta offers to try and get it pushed back, but Irene sees no point in delaying the inevitable, as she's already convinced herself that she's going to prison. As she sits alone on one of the park benches, she burst into tears, feeling more alone than ever. As the day rolls around, a despondent Irene arrives at Reefton Lakes District Court ready to meet her fate, but is stunned when Harper, Jessica Redmayne, and Dana, Ally Harris, appear from nowhere. In next week's episodes, Greta is equally surprised to see Harper and Dana, suggesting that Harper's lawyer would have recommended that she keep her distance from Irene. Harper explains that he did, but that Irene was acting out of kindness and deserves her support. Unfortunately, Ms. Roberts' kindness is not on trial, Greta coldly retorts. It's at that moment that John, Shane Withington, bounds up and asks Irene why he had to find out from Alf that she was being sentenced that morning. I didn't want to bother you, is Irene's response, but John isn't having any of it as he asks Greta for all the details, what kind of magistrate are they dealing with? Tough cookie and a stickler for the rules, Greta explains. Part of the reason I was keen to delay. As proceedings begin, there's a surprise request from the DPP, whose lawyer Matthew Fillmore, Gerard Carroll, asks to make a statement before sentencing. He tells Magistrate O'Connell, Richie Singer, that the facts of the case are very simple, Irene chose to ignore the law, and it's not the first time she's done it. He asked the magistrate to take note of her criminal record, which clearly shows that Irene believes herself to be above the law. And for that reason, we ask that the maximum penalty of seven years imprisonment be applied. When it's Greta's turn to address the magistrate, she explains that while they aren't trying to diminish the seriousness of Irene's crime, there are extenuating circumstances to explain her actions. The magistrate replies that while he understands that, he also knows that the prosecution has a point. It's not the first time Irene has broken the law. Her previous convictions speak to a history of this kind of behavior, and he will be taking them into account. Things are looking bad, and as the magistrate prepares to hand down the sentence, John, who is sitting behind them in the dock, whispers a panic do something in Greta's direction. I do have something to add, Your Honor, Greta adds, in a bold and unrehearsed move. Ms. Roberts would like to make a statement. What the flippin' heck are you playing at? asks Irene, who had no idea she would be asked to speak. The magistrate is willing to allow the statement, and grants Irene a short recess of half an hour to allow her to prepare, and, more importantly, to calm her nerves. Outside, Greta explains that while she can prompt Irene with some questions, the point of the exercise is for Irene to convince the magistrate what kind of person she is. Irene is still unsure pointing out that she's no public speaker, but Greta insists that they have to try something. I'll be honest with you, Irene, we're in trouble, Greta explains. So you need to convince the magistrate that you're a fine, upstanding citizen who made a mistake. And if you don't, you could be doing serious time. On the dock, Irene struggles to control her nerves as Greta asks her to explain why she permitted Dana to stay in her home. Irene explains that Dana was in trouble, and while she knew that Dana was hiding from the police, she was being hunted by a crooked cop. She didn't know who to trust, she was terrified, and she had every right to be, because that Madden is bad news. Matthew, the lawyer for the prosecution, stands up and reminds the judge that the case isn't about Detective Madden, but about Irene's actions, something which riles Irene up. Gives the lawyer an angry serve telling him that she's fed up of him talking about her as if she's the bad guy. You are the bad guy, Ms. Roberts, he retorts. By your own admission, you are guilty of hiding a known fugitive. 